Right, welcome to this week's Ask GMBN, where we try and answer your questions that you've left below last week's video or using the hashtag AskGMBN. Doddy, let's kick it off. Yeah, so first up from Eric Thatcher. Can you explain tire width? A 2.3 seems a lot bigger than a 2.2. Well, it depends on the brand. They can vary massively. I bet if you get your tape measure right, they never measure what they say on the mm. sidewall. So yeah, they can be completely different. But also don't forget that although it's uh, only 0.1 of an inch in width, the actual volume of the tire will increase. So it will look a bit bigger than 2.2. Yeah, some tires you get, get them a bit taller, don't you? And some yeah. a bit wider. So you do get that effect. Um, Definitely depends on the brand. Uh, Joe Danny Gianti, does incorrect frame size affect your ability through a manual or a bunny hop? I find it pretty hard with my size large specialized cross country pro bike and I'm 173 centimeters tall. Okay, so any long bike is going to be harder to get the front end up than a short bike just for obvious reasons because it's going to be further away from you. So even if your bike is on the larger side for you, perhaps if your front end is raised a bit, so maybe a slightly shorter stem, a higher stem or a higher bar, that could be a good way to help. But I think, as you're probably going to say, something it's going to be down to technique, really. Yeah, I think you'd, you'd always be able to bunny hop any bike, but if the wheels are, you know, the wheelbase is longer and you're stretched out, then your ability to throw your weight around is going to be compromised a little bit, but you'll still be able to do it. So keep practicing, and here's a video on how to help with your bunny hop. Good luck. The bunny hop is an essential technique you need to use on a mountain bike. It's something that I use all the time for getting over obstacles something like a really slippy route or a rock section, rather than driving the bike into these things, you start taking weight off the wheels, maybe jumping that section completely, or maybe just unweighting slightly so you're carrying speed over these edges. Also, it's the key technique you need to use to make height on a jump. All right, next up is from Perking. Can you make a video comparing fat bikes with suspension and fat bikes without? Alternatively, maybe you can just talk about them here. Um, yeah, I've never ridden a full suspension fat bike. I, part of me feels like you don't need it. You've got so much compliance in those tires that it feels like you're making the bike heavier, a bit more cumbersome for not much reason. Yeah, I agree totally. Um, I think the only exception might be someone like Blake who wants to completely misuse the bike. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. I think, I think he's hurt the forks on his one. Uh, yeah, he has. Um, I've never, have I ridden? Yeah, I have ridden a fully rigid one and that's fine, completely fine. So yeah, I don't feel like I would want a full suspension one. Anyway. Be a good excuse to get a ride time in snow and sand though. Eh? Would be, yeah. Pavel Zubov, uh, is jumping on a 29er easier than on a 27.5 bike? Does it in a, uh, behave in a more stable way whilst in the air? And which wheel size will be easier to start practicing jumping on for a newbie? Um, I would say 29s definitely feel more stable, getting them in the air. They're a bit harder to sort of move around. Yeah. yeah I think a 27.5 is gonna be easier to learn to jump on. I think so. I think smaller wheels helps you move around a bit more. 29er, I do bars my bum in the rear tire occasionally, and that's something you really don't wanna do on a jump. For sure, yeah. Um, but yes, they are a bit more stable. But down to a strength thing as well, it's going to be easier to get a cheaper and stronger 27 and a half inch wheel than it is with a 29. So yep. in terms of how strong your wheel's going to be, go for the little wheels for jumping. Definitely get a bit more bendable, don't they, the bigger they get. Yeah. Uh, go on then. Uh, next up's from Big Beachy. Uh, I wanted to make my own bike then. Do you think those rubber jigsaw mats are worth the money or should I just keep concrete floor? Yeah, I like a mat. Uh, we were talking about this. I actually yeah. use one of those turbo trainer mats that I got as a freebie years ago. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And that goes in front of my uh, work stand, so I yeah. stand on that. Um, I think definitely have some sort of rubber mat because you're going to be dropping stuff and sort of yes. it's going to be something you drop and it roll off under a fridge or... In fact, yeah. I used to have a really horrible carpet that I pulled out of the house <laughs> when we renovated the house and put it into the garage, but it had those, like the Paisley effect on it. Yeah. And if you dropped anything, it would be really hard to find <laughs> it on the floor. Yeah, I've just put rubber floor in mine actually. So yeah. I'm, I'm a convert, I would go rubber floor. Um, if you want to see the sort of cool stuff you want to spec out in your workshop, all the extra spares you can keep from previous bikes and that, have a look at this video. So in the last maintenance video, we checked out some essential spares that I recommend that you'll have alongside your basic toolkits at home. Now this time, I'm gonna be delving once again into my little box of goodies and showing you all the sorts of stuff that you should try and keep at home and start compiling alongside your toolkits. They're gonna to make working on your bike a lot better and a lot easier in future. So here are the best things to set your workshop up like a pro. My next question comes from Elias Hill. I'm 13, I want to get into slope style competition, but there's no competitions where I live in the US. How could I get into it? Um, of course, tricky one, it's quite specialist. I reckon you've yeah. got to probably go to a bike park that's got that sort of facility there to get riding and meet yeah. some other riders that got that stuff. 
Um, looking on worldbikeparks.com, there's quite a few options out there. Don't know where you are in the States, but one that springs to mind is Highland Bike Park. They've got some pretty major stuff there and they do some significant events, but you're gonna have to sort of be a bit more localized though. Yeah, stuff in it. You need foam pits and stuff like that. Yeah. Getting, uh, really I'll take the skate there. parks to be honest. It's yeah. good for learning a lot of their skills. Uh, US is so big, I don't know, you might have to start traveling. So who knows? Um, right, SP1 says, I wanted to sell my bike to help fund a new one. It needs a bit of work to get it running smoothly. So am I best uh, specifying this in the description when he's trying to sell it or stripping the bike down and selling the parts? Uh, it depends if you want a fast sale. I'd say give your bike a good clean and a once over and just be honest about it in the description. If yeah. it's got any scratches, to tell people. It's a bike, they get ridden and you'll get a quicker, more honest, faster sale, make a bit of cash. I yeah, think. I've heard people can make more money if you strip down and sell it, but then if you're selling a slightly worn part, it's gonna be yeah. more difficult. So you might be better off selling it as one if it's a bit of an old bike. Yeah, just be straight up, get a shot of it, get a new bike. Yeah, happy it's, days. It's an easiest way of doing it. Uh, MTB Dom says, I'm now 14, I love downhill, but I can't attend many races due to my siblings. I was wondering how else I might get noticed by the big brands. Uh, I guess social media is a big one nowadays. It's, it's a difficult thing to build a big following, but if you're doing yeah. cool stuff, making cool little videos, Instagram's probably the biggest one, I think, now for pro riders. So Definitely, get yourself yeah. out there, get a friend maybe who's into filming to make you some really quality, cool little videos. Start pushing yourself. Yeah, just have a good attitude and enjoy it. That, yeah. that will get you noticed. Plenty of people like Josh Lewis, uh, yeah. who isn't, you know, he's a good racer, but he's by no means winning races. He's got a massive following. He seems to have more fun on a bike than anyone I know. Absolutely. Yeah, and people seem to love him for it, including the Santa Cruz, so. Yep, right. Let's hit the quick fire round. Okay. As quick as you can. Right, Adam Turner, can you please do a series on trail building that includes how to build features and maintain them? Yes, we should get Jonesy to do that. That's a good idea. Mm. Loves a shovel, that man. Uh, Nicholas MP, here in Florida, there are plans to make downhill mountain bike trails on old retired landfills. Oh, that comes from last week. We are talking about uh, people that don't have much elevation around them and how yeah. they get into riding downhill, so that's cool. Like that. Wasn't uh, Whistler built on old landfill? Yeah, you it said was, that, yeah. yeah. It's a big old hill there as well, big yeah. mountain behind that. Yeah. Um, feed your brain, should I buy a cheap, aggressive hardtail and upgrade some parts or buy the frame and start building the bike? I would buy the bike, ride it, as you wear stuff out, start upgrading them. That way you get to learn the bike and what you want to change on it. Yeah, building bikes can also take quite a long time, can it, to stick everything oh, together. Tell me about it. Specking bits, <laughs> making sure bits fit the bike. Um, Paul John Francisco, can I use a dual crown suspension fork on a non MTB downhill frame? You can. Uh, we've seen that in the past, people maybe building up a free ride star bike with like a 160, 180 mil travel bike and stick in. Triple clamps in there. I wouldn't do it on anything less than that. Anything less than 160, 170 mil. I don't feel you need to these days, to be no. honest. No. Single crowns are good. Yeah, Lyric or uh, the Fox 36. Yeah. So big, burly forks. Mm. Yeah. Um, Grayson Thwaite. Thwaite. Is Blake going to Crankworks? Well, I hope so. I've always gone on a really expensive holiday with a company credit card. That. I think I asked that one already last week. But yes, <laughs> he's, he's there, there. now. <laughs> Uh, I'll do another one then. Brian Zant, hey guys, should I convert my downhill bike to single speed? Derailleurs always break. Um, that's a great idea if you're riding bike parks, but as Blake found out last year in Whistler when he converted his, it's a real pain when you've got to ride anywhere with a slight bit of incline. Yep. Uh, it ruined his trip, actually. Did it? <laughs> yeah. Completely ruined his trip to yeah. uh, Crankworx. Um, Blake did a bike check with Nico Vink, uh, his Scott Gambler, is single speed, but that is quite a specialised bike for riding bike parks. Uh, Big Man 101, can you backflip? I can, or well, used to be able to. Never tried, probably can't. <laughs> right, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a bit different this week. It's another question about entering events, but check out this video from Dylan, who's in Hertfordshire uh, in England. He's 14 years old, he's looking in to getting into racing. However, I don't know whether I should partake in enduro or downhill. I'm not sure which would suit my style of riding. I love speed, jumps and drops, but I think I'll be diving in the deep end with downhill at my age. Any advice? Um, I think you need to try a bit of everything. Have a bit of fun with it. Learn, learn, yeah. learn about yourself, basically, and you'll soon find out what you prefer doing. Well, that's what I did, to be honest. I love jumping, just like you do, Dylan. Same age. I think I was 14 or 15 mm. when I did my first race, and I did downhill to begin with, just because there was a downhill race local to me. Yeah. Um, so it's just easy to do. Uh, down in Hertfordshire, south of England, there probably are a couple of grassroots things. Yeah, there'll be some stuff out there. Headlines, yeah. possibly. So just have a go, see if you can get your mum and dad to drive you out there and just try a race. You'll soon learn what you like to do. Yeah, you don't need to go to any of the big sort of national events, like regionals and local events are actually better, I think, for yep. getting into it. Lots of grassroots racing going yeah. on, so do that. 
Uh, if you want to send your videos in to correct me if I'm wrong, use our brand new uploader. We'll try and help you out, give you some advice. If you're thinking about getting into events, why don't you watch the video following me around at the recent Ard Rock Enduro? Click over there for that one. Yeah, and if you're specking out a workshop and you want to get the sort of basic tools and stuff in there, click down here. It tells you everything you need to work on your bike at home. Cool. As ever, leave your questions down below and we'll try and help you out next week. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that sub button.